This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and today I'm beginning a brand new series that I have never taught before, and I'm so excited that I can bring it to you. And thank you for letting me come right into your space. We're going to dive into the Bible to see what the Bible means when it tells us to walk in the Spirit. I know that you want to walk in the Spirit. You know, when I was a young man attending church, usually when we were doing something wrong, the pastor would say, hey, you guys, you need to walk in the Spirit. And I remember thinking, what does that mean? And how do you do it? Well, today and all this week, we're going to begin examining what it means to walk in the Spirit. I know that you want to walk in the Spirit and you want to please the Lord. So that's what we're going to be looking at. And we're offering you the brand new series, which is called The Works of the Flesh Versus the Fruit of the Spirit. The subtitle says you choose death permeated works or supernatural life giving fruit. This is going to be so rich. And I want you to order your copy, which you can order at runner.org or give us a call and be sure to order the study guide at the same time. And right now on our website, we're offering you my daily devotionals called Sparkling Gems from the Greek, volume number one, volume number two. In each of these, there are 1,000 Greek word studies. If you enjoy all the Greek that I share in my programs, you will just devour these books. So be sure to order yours today. It's something that you'll go back to again and again and again. It's a daily devotional. You don't have to read it all at once. But in the back of both of these books, there is a full listing of all the Greek words so that you can also use it as a research tool in your study life. So order yours today. And remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, we're going to send you two books as our way of saying welcome to the partner family. Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness and my book called Life in the Combat Zone. We always give these two books to anyone who becomes a partner with our ministry. And please, if you have a prayer need, let us know how to pray for you. We're waiting for the phone to ring right now or for your email to show up in our inbox so we can begin to release our faith for God to move in your life. So let us hear from you. But I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust. A message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Today, we're going to go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 15, and begin the brand new series about the works of the flesh versus the fruit of the Spirit. But I want to ask you, have you ever had strife and contention in a relationship? maybe with a spouse or with a sibling, maybe with a child or a fellow worker, you know it can be pretty wounding when you get into a contentious relationship. And that is not walking in the spirit. Strife and contention is a very low level manifestation of the flesh. And we have to choose whether we're going to function on the low road or the high road. And that's what Paul begins by asking us in Galatians chapter 5, Verse 15, what do you want? What do you choose? And here's what he says. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. What does that mean, bite and devour? Well, the word bite is the Greek word dakno, and listen to this. It literally means to bite with the teeth. Ugh, that sounds so unpleasant. But figuratively, it means to wound with words or to lacerate and rend with insults and reproaches. You know, very often when you're in a contentious, strife-filled conversation, words get out of control and wounding words are spoken that you wish you could retract, but it's too late. You've already lacerated someone. You've already rended someone with your words, with your insults and with your reproaches. That's what happens when the flesh is in control. In fact, Paul goes on to say, but if you bite and devour one another. The word devour is a compound of two Greek words, the word kata and the word estheo. The word kata means down and estheo means to eat or to consume. And when you compound the two words together, it means, listen, to eat, to devour, to gulp, and to swallow completely. Have you ever been swallowed in a conversation? 
or you feel you just chewed somebody up and swallowed them down. That's what the flesh wants to do. It produces death. It does not produce life. In fact, Paul goes on to say, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. The word take heed in Greek is blepete. It's the direct form of the word blepo. It was intended to jolt the listeners. It means listen, pay attention, beware. Hey, really pay attention. You need to understand that if you continue this, you will consume one another. The word consume, the Greek word analisco, which means to be totally consumed, to be completely eaten up, destroyed, or devoured. And that's what the flesh will do if you let the flesh have its way. But then you come to Galatians 5 and verse 16, where Paul gives us the alternative. And in Galatians 5, verse 16, Paul says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So now we have an alternative. We make a choice. We can either bite and devour one another and consume one another, or we can choose to walk in the Spirit. And in verse 16, when Paul says, this I say, in Greek, it is very emphatic. It says, lego, day. The word lego means, now listen, I'm going to say something to you. The word day is categorical. It is emphatic. And in fact, you could translate it like this. I say categorically, I say emphatically, and now he's offering them another alternative. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And when Paul says walk, it is a compound word, the Greek word peri, pateo, the word peri means around. It describes something that is encircling. The word pateo is from pathos, which means to walk, and it describes a path. But when you compound the two words together, it means to walk around in one general vicinity, to walk, to step, to stride, to tread, to habitually walk around in one general vicinity, and therefore it can even be translated to live. You could translate this live in the Spirit, and actually that would be a very good translation, and it means we really can live in the Spirit. Most people wish they could do it just once a week. But Paul says we can do it all the time. We can habitually walk in this area. It can be the realm where we live, the realm where we function, the realm where we live our lives controlled by the Holy Spirit. And my friend, I know that you want that. This person has walked in one region for so long that it has now become his environment, his place of daily activity, the sphere that encircles his existence. And one expositor says this word walk, the Greek word peripateo, describes a person that has walked on one trail so many times and for so long that now he can nearly walk it blindfolded because he has walked it and walked it and walked it and walked it. It is the realm where he functions. And it reminds me of a time when Denise and I invited two people to come see us in Moscow. Oh, we were so excited at the thought of them coming. But the wife said to me, Rick, you don't know that I've lost my eyesight. I can no longer see. She said, in my home, I know where all the furniture is. Even though I cannot see, I can walk here. I can walk there because I've memorized everything. I'm safe. I'm secure in my home. Even with no sight, I can walk. That really is a good description of this word walk, the Greek word peripateo. You've walked in the spirit and walked in the spirit and walked in the spirit that now it has become a place where you're safe and you're secure, you comfortably, even leisurely walk there. And therefore, sometimes this word walk is translated by some expositors as the word stroll, to stroll in the spirit. And of course, strolling is something that is leisurely and enjoyable. God wants us to enjoy the walk in the spirit. That's exactly what it means. It means to take a stroll or to leisurely walk. This is not a person that is frustrated trying to walk in the Spirit, but he has walked in the Spirit so habitually, now he can walk there in a restful way, unhurried, relaxed, peaceful, calm. It is the place of his existence, and that is what God is calling me and you to. Again, most people would say, if I could just walk in the Spirit once in a while, or maybe on Sunday when I go to church, stay in a good mood and not say anything strifeful, but my friends, God has something much higher for us. 
God wants us to walk in the Spirit all the time. And in fact, Galatians chapter Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 says, This I say then, which means I say this emphatically, I say this categorically, walk regularly in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. The two words shall not in Greek are really important. In Greek, it is the word ou and the word me. The word ou is an emphatic no, and the word may is a canceller, it is a negative. When you compound these two words together, it means you will emphatically not in no way fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And the word fulfill is the Greek word teleo. The word teleo always carries the idea of completing something, satisfying something, gratifying something, bringing something to completion which means if you're walking in the Spirit, you shall in no wise, no, not, never, fulfill, gratify, or satisfy the lusts of the flesh. The word lust is the Greek word epithumia. It's a compound of two words. The word epi means over. It is an intensifier in this word. The word thumia is from the word thumos. The word thumos describes passionate desire, but when these two words are compounded into one, the word epi, which means over, and it is an intensifier, and the word thumos, when they're compounded together, they form the Greek word epithumia, which pictures a desire, a craving, or a carnal longing of the flesh, and because of the intensifier epi, it pictures one that is all bent over. He's yearning for something. He's pining for something, almost like a drug addict that is so bent on having his next fix. Everything in him is leaning toward it. He's bent over, craving it. That is the word that is used here. And Paul talks about the lust of the flesh. The word flesh is the Greek word sarkos, which describes the flesh, the carnal nature or base fleshly instincts. And my friend, it simply means the flesh has a will and a mind of its own. And if you let your flesh express itself, your flesh will be doubled over to do what is wrong. Your flesh will crave that which is wrong. And you have to make a decision whether you are going to let the spirit control you or your flesh. This is the war of two realms. You're going to be controlled by the spirit or you're going to be controlled by the flesh. And Paul tells us we have the ability to make the choice. Now, let me say it to you like this. We have the flesh and we have the spirit. Lying between these two is the soul or the mind. And with the mind, we have to choose which part of us is going to dominate. If we choose to yield to the flesh, then we're going to produce some really negative death permeated works. If we choose to walk in the spirit, and it is a choice, we can move into a higher realm where we produce luscious fruit that produces godly things in our life. But we are the ones who choose. Line between the flesh and the spirit is the soul, and the soul is the deciding factor. That's why we call Jesus Lord. We're submitting our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions to Jesus. And when you call Jesus Lord, it means you're deciding you're going to do what he tells you to do. And he commands you to make the choice to walk in the spirit. And because this word walk is the Greek word peripateo, it doesn't mean walk in the spirit once in a while or maybe on Sundays. It means regularly, habitually as a manner of life almost like one that is blindfolded. You've done it so often, now you can do it without even thinking. It's become your realm of habitation. In fact, now you can leisurely stroll in that place. That is the level that God is calling all of us to. Not just to hit it once in a while, but every day to habitually live in the Spirit. And in fact, that word walk, the Greek word peripatel, can be translated, this I say then, live in the Spirit. That is God's goal for you, that you would live in that realm. And if you live in that realm, Paul says, you shall not in no way, no wise, no not, never fulfill. And the word fulfill again, the Greek word teleo, you will not gratify, you will not satisfy, you will not fulfill the lust or the hankerings or the cravings of your lower base instinct, carnal nature, the flesh. And in fact, the RIV 
of Galatians 5.16 would be this. Make the path of the Spirit the place where you habitually live and walk. Become so comfortable on this spiritual path that you learn to leisurely and peacefully stroll along in that realm. Living your life in this spirit realm is the best way to guarantee you will not allow the yearnings of your flesh to creep out and fulfill themselves. That's so good, I'm going to read it to you again. Listen to this. Make the path of the Spirit the place where you habitually live and walk. Become so comfortable on this spiritual path that you learn to leisurely and peacefully stroll along in that realm. Living your life in this spirit realm is the best way to guarantee that you will not allow the yearnings of your flesh to creep out and to fulfill themselves. That's really what Galatians 5, 16 means. But then when you get to Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, the Apostle Paul tells us there is a war taking place between your spirit and your flesh. Listen to what he says. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Well, what are the things that you would do if you could. If you could, you'd be kind all the time. If you could, you'd never say a harsh word. If you could, people would think that you were compassionate. If you could, you would be a blessing all the time. That's what you would do if you could. The problem is your flesh keeps expressing itself. And Paul says, if you can get the flesh out of the way, you can be what you want to be. Listen to what he says. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. The word flesh is again the Greek word sarkos, which describes flesh. It describes the carnal nature or base fleshly instincts. The word lusteth again is the Greek word epithumia. It's a compound of those two words. The word epi, which is an intensifier, it means over. The word thumos, which describes passionate desires. When you compound the two words together, it describes the flesh yearning, hankering, doubled over, bent over, wanting to express itself. And Paul says, the flesh lusts against the spirit. The spirit in Greek means the things of the spirit. But the word against is a Greek word kata. And the word kata describes something that is coming down, something that is against, something that wants to conquer, to dominate, or to squash, which means the moment you begin to walk in the spirit, your flesh will wage war. Your flesh will say, no, I'm not yielding my authority. Your flesh will say, no, I'm not yielding my place of supremacy in this person's life. And your flesh will declare war against the spirit, attempting to squash it, to come down on it, attempting to conquer it and to dominate it. And the apostle Paul warns us of this in this verse. He says, for the flesh lusts against it is a dominating force against, the Greek says, the things of the spirit. And then he continues to say, and the spirit against the flesh. The Greek literally says, and categorically the spirit against the things of the flesh. The spirit of God and your human spirit is against the operation of your flesh. The spirit in you. The Holy Spirit in you, working through your human spirit, wants to rise to a place of dominance and supremacy in your life. Your spirit, which is filled with the Holy Spirit, wants to produce the life of God and the character of Christ through you. And your spirit, which is inhabited by the Holy Spirit, is against your flesh, bringing its damage and destruction into your life and into the lives of those that are around you. And that's why the verse goes on to say, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. The word against, again, the Greek word kata. Even the spirit in us wants to bring the flesh under control and dominate it. And then he says, and these are contrary, the one to the other. The word contrary in Greek is the word anti kami. And listen to this. It's a compound of two words. The word anti means against. The word kami means to set. But when you compound the two words together, it means to set in opposition against. So the spirit and the flesh, they are in opposition to each other. It means to strategically oppose, to take a stand against, to completely be unreconcilable with each other, 
Like two enemies on opposite sides of a war, it depicts an all-out war, or just imagine two army tanks butted up against each other with their cannons focused on each other, ready to explode. It is a conflict between the flesh and the spirit, both of them raging for control, and they are opposite to one another. And you have a soul that can make a decision which part of you is going to be in control. You can decide that you're going to yield to the flesh, or you can decide you're going to yield to the spirit, but you're the only one that can make that decision. But wait, when we go back to Galatians 5, verse 16, let's look at it again. Paul says, this I say then. In Greek, it says lego. Now listen to me, I'm going to say something. Then he employs the use of the little word day, which describes something that is emphatic or categorical. Listen to me, I'm going to categorically say something to you. I'm emphatically telling you that you can make a choice. Walk in the Spirit. And again, this word walk, the Greek word peripatel, habitually walk in the Spirit. Not once in a while, not just on Sundays, not just when you're in a good mood, but you can habitually walk in the Spirit until it becomes the place where you live your life. Live in the Spirit is really what it means. And you shall not in no wise, no, not never, bring to fulfillment the cravings and the hankerings of the flesh. And Galatians 5, 16, again, could be translated, make the path of the Spirit the place where you habitually live and walk, become so comfortable on this spiritual path that you learn to leisurely and peacefully stroll along in that realm. Living your life in this spirit realm is the best way to guarantee you will not allow the yearnings of your flesh to creep out and fulfill themselves. But my friend, you're the only one that can make that choice. You choose. You have a soul. And with your soul, you choose, I'm going to yield to the flesh realm or I'm going to yield to the spirit. And you make a decision and you're going to eat the fruit of what you choose. So Paul says categorically, emphatically, now this I say then, make the choice to walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. A life dominated by the flesh is a hard life. It is filled with excess, imbalance, extremity, laziness, self-abuse, hatred, strife, bitterness, irresponsibility, and neglect. The way of the flesh is the hardest route to take. But a life dominated by the Holy Spirit is filled with benefits and blessings. I'm talking about love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Don't give way to the flesh and allow it to produce its ugly work in your life. In this series, The Work of the Flesh versus the Fruit of the Spirit, Rick Renner will show you how to identify the works of the flesh, how to stop yielding to the flesh, how to start yielding to the Spirit, how to walk in the Spirit nonstop, how walking in the Spirit can become your realm of existence. This powerful 10-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20. In addition to this teaching series, you can also get the book Sparkling Gems from the Greek Volumes 1 and 2. In these books, Rick unlocks the brilliant treasures within God's Word and shows you how to live an intimate and uncompromising life with God in an easy-to-read devotional format. Each volume of Sparkling Gems explores more than 1,000 in-depth Greek word studies. Sparkling Gems from the Greek Volumes 1 and 2 are available for $45 each. Don't miss this special offer, the series The Work of the Flesh versus The Fruit of the Spirit and the books Sparkling Gems 1 and Sparkling Gems 2. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, where do you think I am right now? This is my old TV set. I used to teach all my programs and come to you from right here in every program, but now I'm working in the new studio because you helped us to build it and I wanna say thank you. But you may ask, well, what's gonna go on in this old studio? This old studio is being transformed into a new TV studio for our new TV network which is called the Good News Channel. And now we're renovating the old studio. We're gonna completely change it. And from this space, we're gonna begin filming new daily TV programs for the new satellite network and the new federal channel, which is called the Good News Channel. The gospel is such good news, and we need to take it into every home. 
And if you're already a part of the giving team, thank you so much for being a partner. And if you're not a part of the giving team yet, please pray about being part of the giving team to help us renovate this studio and to develop our new channel so we can take it into every home of Russia and not just Russia, but around the world to wherever there are Russian speakers. They need the Word of God. And together with you, we can take them the light that will transform their lives. And I want to say thank you now for being a part of our giving team. Today we began a brand new series called The Works of the Flesh versus The Fruit of the Spirit. You choose Death Permeated Works or Supernatural Life Giving Fruit. We can make the choice to walk in the Spirit or to walk in the flesh. How do we make that choice and how do we move out of the flesh realm into the spirit realm? That's what this entire series is about. So please order yours today right now by going online or give us a call and be sure to order the study guide that goes with it. This study guide is just loaded with all the points and the principles and the Greek words so that you can read it while you see it or hear it. And remember that we're offering you my two daily devotionals, Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number one, and Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number two. And in both of these, in each of these, there are 1,000 Greek word studies that will make the New Testament come alive for you. And you can order these at render.org or by giving us a call. But let me pray for you. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you have given us the ability to choose whether we're going to walk the high road or the low road, and you're calling us to choose the high road and to walk in the Spirit, you emphatically and categorically command us to make that choice. And that means we can do it. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us move out of the flesh into the realm of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. But remember, Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.